I don't really know what it is. I don't know if it's COVID-19 and everybody's staying at home all the time, myself included, or I'm not sure where this spark of creativity is coming from, but right now I feel just like, I feel like I have to create all of the time. I feel like I need to just be going and doing something all the time, you know? So let's catch up really quick. And pardon the wobbly camera micro jitters. I'm on this really wobbly table and there's really no other table that's near where I am right now and I'm too lazy to go find one, so ha. <laughs> So between my last upload and now, a lot has happened, a lot has changed. Uh, I ended up getting ankle surgery. Uh, some of you guys know that, some of you don't. Severed my Achilles tendon almost all the way through, about three quarters of the way through. And after having surgery, I was in a cast for about uh, five to seven weeks, somewhere in there. And in that, I was in such a rut of just, I had to rely on other people to do things for me. I couldn't walk, I had to do, I, there's a lot that I couldn't do and it was just very demotivating. And now I'm fully out of the cast, I'm fully out of the boot. I'm ready to get creative, I'm healing up really well, and I'm just really excited to continue this new year. That being said, we're starting things off today. Me and my buddy Chase, you guys know Chase, you love Chase. Here's a clip of Chase if you're new to the channel. But he and I are gonna go and do some street photography downtown. There's not a ton of people outside during this whole COVID-19 thing that's going on that's really just kind of shocked the world. There's not a ton of people that are out on the streets. Uh, Wichita's normally not that busy anyway, but now it's like, it's almost dead, like it's crazy. In this time that I've been away, I've been able to restart my Instagram feed and just try to make things a little bit better. So if you're not already following me and you want to, you can go ahead and follow me at rimsky.quinn. That's about all I have for now. I guess we're gonna go meet up with Chase and uh, let's get this thing started, dude. Alright guys, we are downtown and I am here with my buddy Chase. What's up? And uh, before we get into the shooting and stuff like that, so I just want to talk about gear for a second. If you want to get into photography and videography or you're looking at getting into it and you're not quite sure what to do or how to get there yet, I just want to give you a few quick things to push yourself to finally get in that headspace of I can do this. First and foremost, when you're getting into photography, your gear does not matter. Now let me elaborate on that. When you're getting into photography, you probably have a point and shoot camera, maybe a very low-end DSLR, or maybe just your phone, and that's okay. When I started doing photography, I shot on an iPhone 5. <laughs> but as time has moved forward and technology continues to advance, iPhones and just really any smartphone here in 2020 or from a few years prior, the cameras are really up to par and can compete very well with high-end DSLR cameras. All right, number two, be okay with not having something turn out the way you want it to. If you're starting out, you're not really sure how this thing's going, but you have an idea in your head, right? Uh, the creative juices are flowing, and you go out and try to execute this idea, and it doesn't work out. That's all part of the process. It, it really is, and there's really no way around that. I go out on shoots, and I go out and try to do things that I think are going to be so cool, and the execution's kind of off, or, or it just lighting conditions don't work out or fill in the blank, something goes wrong and it doesn't turn out the way that I want to. And that's okay. When you become a creative, when you become a videographer or a photographer, you have to find the joy in the process. Because if you're focused too much on the end goal, then you will always be disappointed on how things turn out rather than what it takes to get there. If you focus more on what it takes to get there, then you will enjoy the end goal a little more, whether it's good or bad. And number three, and point number three, if you wanna get into photography, videography, whatever it may be, it doesn't even have to be one of these two things that I'm talking about. If you wanna get into something, you just have to do it. You have to go out and you have to start pushing yourself to get that experience. The experience in working, the experience in learning your camera or whatever your craft might be, the experience in you know knowing how lighting affects this and lighting affects that, how stocks might affect this market and, 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 and whatnot. Seventh Era, who is a photographer here on YouTube, his motto is, don't think, just do. And honestly, when it comes to this and when it comes to what I'm saying and when it comes to pushing yourself into doing something, that's really all it, all it takes. You just can't think about it, you know, you gotta put yourself all the way into it, and no matter what happens, 
All you can say is you tried, whether you pass or fail. So with that being said, today I'm going to try something that is way out of my comfort zone, something that I've not really done, something I've not really dabbled in too terribly much. Today while we're shooting, I'm gonna be getting some B-roll, but not just my regular cinematic B-roll. Today I wanna to push myself into a separate realm of video editing and, and shooting. And that separate realm would be speed ramping, and transitions. And now I'm about to back up everything that I just said with those three lousy points, and I'm gonna say that this could go very good, or it could go very bad. But the thing is, whether it goes good or bad, I'm gonna come out on the other side knowing more about it than I did to start with. So, you know, I, it's, it's a win-win situation. It really is. So I guess we're just gonna figure things out as we go, because I've never done this before. And, uh, well, I guess it's gonna start now. So, roll the footage. <laughs> Alright, you guys have seen the final product. Was it the best thing I've ever made? No. Was it the worst thing I've ever made? Surprisingly, still no. You know, even though the edit didn't turn out the best and it wasn't the greatest thing ever, the process leading up to the outcome wasn't disappointing either. One of the biggest takeaways I've learned through this is be patient. Because getting some of these shots and getting certain things, it takes a little while to get the take you know, decent. Take for instance the shot where Chase threw up the camera lens after he pulled it out of the bag. That shot took uh, 20 to 30 takes. You know, it could have been his throw was off, my pan up was off. There's just different factors and different variables that could determine the outcome of a certain shot. But all in all, I've come out on the other side knowing a little bit more about this style of editing and shooting. And if I were to do it again, there are some things that I would do differently. Probably the main one would be getting a pen, getting a piece of paper, and writing down some specific shots that I might want to get. You know, and they could be subject to change, but, you know, in writing those down and writing down maybe the transitions, I would have a better outline in my mind uh, and on paper as to what I would want to do in the video, rather than running and gunning and just kind of hoping things work like I did with this one. Alright, that is enough talking about the video, let's get into the photos. All right, photo number one. And this is honestly one of my favorite photos that we took. This is a panning shot. And if you don't know what a panning shot is, it's basically when your subject is moving and you turn your shutter speed down and you follow your subject at the same speed that they're moving at. And so they're in focus, but since the shutter speed is low, the background is blurry, thus creating the effect that you see in this picture. But I actually really like this photo. Uh, if I was to maybe try to do it differently or try to shoot it again, I would make sure Chase was a little bit more evenly lined up in between the lines there and in between the alley. But overall, I think it was a really, really sick photo. <laughs> okay, photo number two. This one, it's all right. It's not super great, but I really just wanted to show it because of Chase's pose under the clock tower. <laughs> There's really not much to say about this photo. It's just pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, that's really it. Photo number three, and this is probably my most favorite photo from the shoot. I just love the way the light is hitting the clock tower on the right side. And I love that it's kind of like, uh, you know, the contrast between light and dark on either side of the frame. I'm just really in love with the symmetry and just this photo turned out really, really good. There's not much I can say that I would change on it. All right, and finally, photo number four. This shot story is honestly kind of interesting. Uh, we were riding back to the car on the longboards and a fire truck drove in front of us. I was like, dude, I need to get this shot. So I like hauled down the street on my longboard and waited for the fire truck to stop at the stoplight and then hopped off my longboard, took some quick frames, and then the light turned green and it was on its way. But uh, <laughs> I almost ate it hopping off my longboard trying to get this shot. But, but I think I appreciate this image so much just because of all the first responders and everybody that is... Uh, you know, still serving through this time of the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, and it just really means a lot that they are still out trying to help people in this serious time. So if you're one of those people, thank you. All right, that is gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you're able to take something from it. Don't be afraid to pursue the negative. Don't be afraid to fail because in that, we'll learn more and we'll become better on the other side. If you stuck with me for this long, thank you. I appreciate you. I hope you're safe and I hope you're okay. 
new videos coming hopefully every week. That's sort of the general idea right now that I have going on, but that could change and I might miss a week, give or take. It just depends on what happens in life, but we're gonna try to stick to it and I'm gonna keep trying to document my progression in this and hopefully inspire some of you guys out there. So thank you, I love you, take care.